Hello and welcome everyone to this new video on Azure and the topic for today is Azure Pricing Calculator and how to compute the storage cost. So I am on the Microsoft Azure website and as you can see that uh, under the pricing you can go to storage and click on the view button and then we have a couple of options over here that uh, we can select. So under the story, the first option is the region which is pretty straightforward. So you'll pick the region which is closer to you. In my case it is Canada Central. So I'll pick that and under the type you have uh, block, blob, file, table, queue. So we'll be concentrating on these one and then there is a disk storage, unmanaged disk and page blob and managed disk. So I just made a video a couple of days ago explaining how you will compute the cost of uh, a managed versus unmanaged disk. So if you're not familiar with this concept, please uh, watch that one. That will give you a better understanding. But for today's class, we'll be concentrating on these four options. So the first option is block blob. I'm sure Microsoft could have come with a better name, but uh, just to key, keep it simple, let's call it blob storage. And uh, in this one, if I have, uh, you can select a, a journal purpose storage account and you can have a blob storage account. So if I select general purpose storage account, you'll see that I don't have the option of access tier. If I select the standard blob storage account, it gives me the option of access tier. So what does that mean is uh, if you select the hot tier, so if you are or if your organization is going to access the data frequently, it is better to put in the hot tier because you'll be charged accordingly. If you think that you're not gonna access the data that frequently, you can put in a cool tier. So that is the difference between hot and cool tier and that will impact the cost obviously. And then there is an archive which is in preview. So just uh, watch for that. And the other option to uh, keep in mind is the redundancy which is uh, uh, LRS actually let me just quickly tell you more about the type so blob storage is basically think of a blob like any unstructured data so data which doesn't have any structure to that data such as uh, think of anything like videos files audio file uh, uh, the backups everything all those things that you can put in in a in a blob uh, storage so it's like it's like a blob any unstructured data you want to dump into that one you can dump in that and you get out the option of hot and cool tier then we have something what you call a file storage a file storage is used in case you want to create shares and you want to give access to so this can be used uh, so previously, if in older days, you remember that you used to create a file server and then you used to create file shares. But in this, by using the file storage, you can create file share and that can be accessed from different virtual machine or from different servers. So you can give access to people. It uses the SMB protocol. It can be also accessed via the URL. So that is what file storage is. And then there is a table storage. So table storage is basically, which has some sort of structure in that one. So uh it can be semi-structured data or some sort of structure as compared to blob storage which is unstructured data so table storage will use it for storing which has some sort of structure to that particular data and then you have something what you call a queue storage uh, which is basically which you will use so let's say for example in case your website during certain year of the day uh, your certain time in a year uh, a lot of people, so a lot of people, they're accessing that uh, website to buy the products and everything. So you're getting a lot of fits in that. So what you can do is that you can create a queue storage for that one. So when you order a product, you will see, because a lot of people, they're accessing that, uh, it will be put in a queue. So something like in that kind of scenario, you can use the queue storage. So these are the four options. The more very popular ones are the blob and the file storage and uh, you can select hot and cool tier for that. In my case, I'll keep it hot. And in redundancy, you have uh, LRS, locally redundant storage, GRS, geo redundant storage, and RA GRS, which is read access geo redundant storage. So what does that mean is LRS will create three copy for you in the region that you have selected. So in my case, it is Canada Central. So you will have three copies in this uh, region. 
if you select GRS, which means Geo-Written Storage, it will create six copies, three per region. So my uh, default uh, region uh, to Canada Central is uh, uh, Canada East. So you'll have uh, three copies. If I select GRS, you'll have three copies in Canada Central and three copies in Canada East region. So in total, six copies. If I select RAGRS, it will still create the six copies, three per region. The only thing is, the only difference from the GRS is that you also have the read access to your second read region. So these are the three options that you should keep in mind when it comes to redundancy of your data. Uh, and uh, this is a real time replication we are talking about. And then you can uh, select the capacity. You can uh, uh, select in uh, gigabyte or you can go with terabyte. So if I select one terabyte, uh, for data and if I say select LRS it is close to 2490 and then there are a couple of other things to keep in mind which I won't get into much detail like read and write operation data retrieval operation which is uh, which is not that it's not going to have much of uh, impact but uh, the most important thing is to keep in this mind what region the kind of type what kind of tier you want to have and what kind of redundancy you will have so I hope this video was helpful. It gives you an idea about how to compute the storage cost in case you're thinking of deploying in Azure. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.